We're going to head to Diagnose. And you see we've got OBD2, EOBD, and then we have Scan. Over here, this is going to be basically the generic mode where you enter into the, the, the OBD2 global mode that's going to give you the same data basically on every car that you plug this thing into. So you can see I've got eight DTCs in my system. And here you can just read codes just like with any other code reader. We're going to tell it what car it is. And you see we've got a generic misfire, evap leak, fuel trim codes. You know, you can see it, it gives you the code up here, it gives you a definition. You can erase the codes. I am readiness is just going to tell you about the, uh, the readiness monitors, whether they're ready or not, whether you can actually, you know, get your car passed uh, through admissions. Data stream is going to be live data. And let's give you an idea of what you see in there. Basically, these parameters are the global ABD uh, OBD2 parameters. You get these on every car. Coolant temperature, fuel trims, engine RPM, vehicle speed, ignition advance. Again, these parameters are available on all cars and uh, lesser scanners that will let you do live data. These are the parameters you get and they're helpful and you can graph some of those items. The place where this tool kind of loses a little bit of points, in my opinion, is in the graphing capability. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to do this without the engine running. We're not going to be able to see much. Um, but this graph, you, you're able to graph four parameters at a time and the, gra the, the graph is actually a little bit hatchy and it's, it's a little bit too zoomed out in order to really be very usable. Uh, I'll come back to this later on in the video. We'll start the car up later on in the video and I'll show you kind of a, I'll show you the O2 sensors and what those look like. But this, this is the only weak point of this tool in my opinion. But, the re but as far as reading information, it's actually really great. So this is just the generic OBD2 stuff. You can get this same software is available on so many scan tools, basically. I don't know if it's Launch that, that is actually uh, leasing out the software to other companies or if Launch is doing all, making all of these tools or what. I mean, these are all made in China things and, you know, with China, things just kind of uh, uh, get stolen and, uh, you know, products end up making it out the door. So who knows what's actually valid or not, but uh, this software, this same software is available on so many scan tools these days. Anyway, in the scan section, this is where you actually get access to Launch's professional level software. It's still limited. You, you, know, you don't have as many options as you get if you, if you were to buy their professional level scan tool, which costs over $1,000. But here, we're, you know, since I have a BMW, let's check out what their BMW software lets me do. So I have a non-X3. I have an automatic. Actually, I'm sorry, that is, uh, let, the, let the tool automatically figure out the car. And uh, so what it's doing now is it's scanning the various modules that it supports. You can see it says two of 10. There are more than 10 modules or computers on this car, but it only supports up to 10. And, and those 10 really are just different versions of the same basic five that it's gonna do. The DSC unit, that's basically the ABS unit. So yes, this tool actually will read and clear ABS codes. You saw steering angle, angle sensor, transfer case, electric steering. See two different versions of that. There's electronic power steering, just another type of steering that BMW later used. So what this will not do on, on modern BMWs is it will not clear or reset the electronic parking brake. Um, there is a higher model, the CRP 129, I believe, that will be able to do that. But yeah, these are the, the five basic things that it seems to support. DME is the engine computer, EGS is the transmission, the ABS DSC unit, that's obviously the ABS unit, steering angle sensor unit, and then the airbag sensor unit. So it does airbags and it does ABS. So let's go ahead, let's go into the DME. 
you can read fault codes, clear fault codes, and read data streams. So basically, let's go to read fault code. We're going to get the BMW um, error codes for uh, basically for what's wrong with the car. You see, I have 10 codes here, whereas I had only eight in the global ABD2 OBD2 mode. So here, you know, and these 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 BMW codes are less helpful to me because. Uh, you know, the, the actual OBD2 errors are, are definitely much more helpful, but um, the, the descriptions of these problems, they're, they're the same problems. So basically these codes in here are going to match the codes that I was reading in the OBD2 global mode, but some of these descriptions are actually more helpful. You know, the, they're, they're actually, uh, there, there seems to be a little bit of a discrepancy between the descriptions. So it's kind of helpful to me to be able to read the two different ones and, and uh, be able to, um, that, that, will, that will help me diagnose things later on. So you can see, got airflow sensor codes. A lot of these, these codes are there because I've been doing uh, diagnostics with the car and trying to figure certain things out. So you can see we, we can read all the, the data in there and we can also go into read data stream. Now these are different categories of all the different parameters we've got available to us. So I'll just put them all on, uh, let's see, does that? Okay, so I actually have to, here, let me go out. You have to select, on each page, you have to select the parameters you want. So I'm going to select them all. I'm just scrolling through them and you can see we had quite a bit of information just available on that one page. So coolant temp there, you got oil temperature. You can look at that, make sure your oil temperature sensor is working correctly. Intake air temperature sensor, your pedal sensors. Ambient air pressure. That's coming from the, um, the mass airflow sensor, I believe. So you, you, you not only, with this tool, you not only get um, the, the um, mass airflow sensor data, this is, the, this is the one you would get from OBD2 mode, but you also get the voltage reading in the sensor right there, which is nice. Injection duration, battery voltage your knock sensor signal. So you can see how you've got just so much more data available to you. We'll just go through these. Air adaptation without driving position. Smooth running values. That's going to be your misfire counters. So you got misfire counters. Engine idle, engine part load, brake test light, Brake test switch, light switch, clutch switch. So lots and lots of different information in, available in this tool. Let's go out of this. I'm going to take you over to the transmission. There's a lot of data available in the transmission section. Um, I have no code, so we're going to skip that. But General, I believe when I was looking at this before, General had all of the parameters on it. So engine speed, turbine speed, output speed. So if you have some codes, if you have like transmission output speed sensor codes, you can come and select your output speed sensor, you know, go on a test drive and see if you're getting any, you know, if it's, if it's registering the proper uh, speeds there. That's definitely helpful. You can, it'll help you diagnose if you actually have a bad sensor or not. Engine torque, temperature, transmission oil temperature. It gives you the wheel speed sensors. This will let you. This will help you diagnose whether or not you have a bad wheel speed sensor. Uh, if your DSC lights light up in, in this car, uh, you know your DSC light, your transmission light, your uh, some of the other lights. You you won't really know what's going on. But with this tool, you can actually read the codes and figure out what exactly is going on. You can see if the uh, solenoids are are working properly. Again, if you get solenoid codes, so. Lots of great information available in this tool. So I actually have no fault codes in the transmission. We'll go into the DSC. I do have some, some fault codes in there because I got like a, a, a situation where my DSC lights came on. It, it only happened twice and it hap hasn't happened since then, but these are the codes. I, I've left them in here. CAN data error, control unit internal. Oh, that's a great code. 
CAN data fault from the DME DDE. Interesting. And then one for the pressure sensors. So, you know, you can read those codes. And again, you have more data available. I th this is the one I have right here. So you got the wheel speed sensors in here as well. Okay, I think that's the end of the page there. And then the steering angle sensor. I don't believe you're going to be able to calibrate the steering angle sensor, but you can clear the faults from it and you can read the data. And, and there's only one data of it parameter available. It's just the angle, the steering angle. And then airbag codes. You can read your, your airbag memory and clear it out. So if you have an airbag light on, you can actually get rid of that airbag light or at least find out uh, what's causing it if, if that airbag light keeps coming back. So lots of information available in this mode. Really pretty cool. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's start the engine. I'm going to get the, the graphing going of the O2 sensors. Just let me show you the, the one thing that lets me down about this tool. We'll go into global mode. So we'll just do, all right, let's do the sensor number ones. So these are the pre-cat O2 sensors and they should just be cycling up and down between uh, 0.8 and 0.1 volts. Yeah, and so already you can just see how, how zoomed out this, this data, this graph is. There's no way for me to actually zoom in on this data. And you can see that it's so, it's so hatchy. Basically the, the drawings are just not very clean. They're not really very easy to look at. You can't really tell anything by looking at this, this graph right here. So unfortunately, this is the only thing that disappoints me about this scan tool. If only this was better, this would be a great, great scan tool. But other than, you know, otherwise, other than that, the ability to read data and all that extended data is going to come in really handy when diagnosing a lot of different things. So here are all the different cars that it would actually support. I'm just going to page through these for you. Pretty good coverage, actually. So it supports all cars that we're going to find here in the U.S. market. I'm not sure about Europe. You, you guys should know. Um, 